Let's take a look at a slightly similar problem. So we still have the cliff here and the water down below, but this time we will throw the ball upwards instead of letting it drop. So here's my ball and I'm going to give it some initial velocity upwards. Let's say we'll throw it up at 10 meters a second. So the trajectory path that the ball will follow will look something like that. And we wish to find out how long it takes to get to the top and how long it takes to get there. So this is what I'm trying to find. The maximum height to which the ball gets to and the time it takes to get there. So let's write our chematical variables down and let's choose a direction. I'm going to choose, let's choose up positive this time just uh, to switch things around. And if I were to do that, my acceleration is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And the thing to notice here is that when the ball reaches its maximum height, it needs to stop for a little while to turn around and go back down. So the final velocity is going to be zero. And I also have that the initial velocity is 10 meters per second because that's how fast I started throwing it upwards. So I wish to find both the displacement s and the time t. So let's just eliminate the um, let's just eliminate displacement for now. And if we go back and look at the kinematical equations to find which one does not contain s, it would be v equals u plus a t. That's the first equation. And from here, I can find the time. So if I just rearrange this, we find that time is v minus u over a. So this is going to be 0 minus 10. And I forget to mention that this 10 is plus. Let's just explicitly state that because it's going upwards and I've chosen upwards as my positive coordinate. And I'm going to divide that by minus 9.8. So I'm going to get minus 10 over minus 9.8 for the time, which would make sense because minus divided by minus would give me a positive number and time will have to be positive. So the time taken will be 1.02 seconds. So that's how long it takes for the ball to get from the bottom up to the peak. And now that I have four variables out of the five, I can use any equation that contains displacement. I'm going to use the second equation to get the displacement plus v t, which will give me half times 10 plus 0 times 1.02, which will be this cuts to make that a 5. It's going to be 5.1 meters. So that's how high it gets up to. Um, we can answer another question. So for example, we may be asked, you know, when does it get back to where I first threw it from? So when does it get back to here? So let's set up our variables again. It's always safe to rewrite your variables because certain things may have changed in that time. For example, the displacement is now zero because it's come back to where I first threw it. Of course, I've expanded this out in the x direction. It doesn't look like it's zero, but um, this is just for clarity. In actuality, it's moving along the same line up and down. So by the time it's come back to where I threw it, 
displacement would have been 0. The initial velocity is still 10. The final velocity is not 0 anymore because it will be moving in the opposite direction. In fact, you can show that it will be moving at exactly the same speed but in the opposite direction. But let's just say we don't know that for now. I can still solve the problem. My acceleration is downwards, so it's minus 9.8. And I want to find out when it gets back to here. So I don't need the final velocity. And if you look at the list of equations that you have, you will find that the one without the final velocity is the third equation, which is this one. Okay, so I'm just going to look for the time here. So let's plug in the values. The displacement is zero. Initial velocity is 10, and acceleration is 9.8. This cuts to 4.9, and I can factorize this because t is a common factor. Oops, see I missed the minus sign here. The acceleration is in the negative direction, 4.9 t squared, uh, sorry, 4.9t. So you're going to get two solutions here. The first solution is t equals 0 from that case, because if t is 0, 0 multiplied by anything in the parentheses will give me 0. And indeed, that's what we expect, because the first time when the displacement is 0 is when it's in my hand right here, right before it leaves my hand. And the second time, is when it comes back round. So that's going to be when 10 minus 4.9 t is 0. That's when this other factor here is 0, meaning this factor. So let's just rearrange that 4.9 t. And if you divide both sides by 4.9, you get approximately 2 seconds. So that's how long it takes for the ball to go back up, go up, and come back down to the point where I first threw it. Okay, continuing on with the same problem. Let's say I want to now find out um, when is it moving at five, when does it have a speed of five meters per second? So the question is, when is the final velocity 5 meters per second? Now, if you analyze the situation, you see that it will have a speed of 5 meters per second twice. On the way up, it's going to slow down, and then somewhere here, it's going to have a speed of 5 meters per second, or a velocity of plus 5 meters per second. And then once it goes around from the peak, coming back down, it's going to speed up again until it gets to the speed of five meters per second again, but this time it will have the velocity of minus five meters per second. So using these two cases, I'm going to find the two times at which the speed is five meters per second. So let's start by writing the variables out again. I'm not going to know the displacement. In fact, I don't want displacement. Initial velocity is 10 plus 10. Final velocity is plus 5, because let's do this first case first, the one on the way up. Acceleration is downward, so it's minus 9.8. And time is what I'm looking for. So if you go back and look at the equations and find which one does not have displacement in it, it'll be the first one. And a little algebra will show that time is final minus initial over acceleration. So I'm going to get... 5 minus 10 over minus 9.8. So that would give me minus 5 over minus 9.8.51 seconds. Okay, so that's when it first gets to a speed of 5 meters per second. Now let's do the second case where it comes all the way back round and it's moving downwards with a speed of 5 meters per second, which means a velocity of minus 5 meters per second. So let's set it up again. I'm not going to know the displacement once again. 
The initial velocity stays the same because I'm taking this point as my initial when I first threw it up. The final will now be minus 5. Acceleration is minus 9.8 and minus 5 because it's moving downwards at this point in time. I'm looking for the time. So once again, I can use the same equation, which I found here. Um, which will give me minus 5, minus 10, minus 5 because that's the final velocity, and then minus a plus 10 because that's the initial velocity, and then divide by minus 9.8. And once again, you see we get a positive answer as you should. Minus 15 divided by minus 9.8, which gives me a 1.53 seconds is when it gets back. So the two times here are that's 0.51 seconds is when it gets there and 1.53 seconds is when it comes back around and gets to there.